Hello, I'm Simon Whistler. You're watching Top 10s Net, and in the video today, the top 10 ways plants are more like animals than you might think. Recently, scientists have found evidence that plants around us behave more like creatures rather than inanimate objects. Once considered to be at the bottom of the food chain, plants are slowly rising to the status of a legitimate living thing. Just like animals, they have genuine characteristics that imply a real life experience. Plants can feel, see, smell, and even cry out in pain. This perspective is gaining ground in the scientific community to the point where the Swiss government has granted, for the first time ever, plant rights alongside human and animal ones. Plants actually may be a lower form of animal, and in the video today, we're looking at 10 reasons for you to believe that. Number 10. Plants can see. Seeing the world doesn't necessarily require having a pair of eyeballs. Plants have developed the ability to see light waves through the use of spectral light receivers that have evolved over thousands of years. These light receptors tune into different wavelengths to help discern, among other things, the sun's location in the sky. Two types of receptors prevail in plant species, phytochromes and phototropins. Both are situated just beneath a plant's cell membranes. Phytochromes are sensitive to far red of the light spectrum, which allows plants to know where the sun is setting. Phototropins are sensitive to the blue spectrum of light, which allows plants to find the sweet spot to maximize photosynthesis during the day. This visual acuity may not be as fine-tuned as ours, but plants aren't mobile like us. They just don't need it. Plants can survive by seeing light waves to know where to direct their leaves or when to shut down at night. What might appear like blindness to us is a really full spectrum to our friendly neighborhood leafy greens. Plants can see, just like other animals do. Number 9. Plants can smell when it comes to smell, plants can take a whiff when they really need to. In fact, their sense of smell isn't that different from our own. Smell involves capturing volatile chemicals in the air through nostrils or other means. Scientists have confirmed that our brainless plant friends can indeed process these volatile chemicals without a pair of nostrils. This sense can even help them discern the difference between friend and foe. For example, the dodder plant seedling is a parasitic plant that can't engage in photosynthesis on its own, so it looks for other plants that it can suck food energy from. But how does it choose a suitable host? Well, it does this by smelling. Dodder plants pick up volatile chemicals emitted from potential hosts to determine which one is stronger and healthier. In one experiment, a dodder plant preferred a tomato plant over a wheat one by simply reading its scent alone. And how about another example of smelling? Fruits will synchronize their ripening process based on which one has ripened the most. The ripened fruit sends out volatile chemicals in the air that are picked up by less ripened plants, and as a result, they ripen together at roughly the same rate. Plants can pick up volatile chemicals in the air just like us. These scents help them navigate the wild and pick their friends. Now, it's a far cry from a human nose, but plants definitely have some kind of keen ability to smell just like animals do. Number 8. Plants can hear. They say that big ears are a sign of wisdom. If that's true, then some of the oldest plant species alive shouldn't be judged by their covers. Plants teach us that they can hear without a pair of ears. Scientists now believe that plants pick up sound through specialized proteins called mechanoreceptors. These are found within the cell membranes and they respond to air pressure. Sound waves cause their leaves to vibrate ever so slightly, thereby disrupting these proteins, and that sends a signal to the rest of the plant. Proof of this ability comes with studies conducted on mustard plants. Researchers from the University of Missouri have discovered that mustard plants can actually hear the chomping sound of caterpillars munching on their leaves. To prove it, scientists took sound recordings of the chomping sound as well as other sounds such as an insect mating or wind blowing through air. They played back the recordings to find if the plant would respond to the chomping sounds only. The plants recognized the sound and responded to it in the same way they would in the wild. This response proves that plants can hear just like humans. And in case you're wondering if plants prefer Mozart over Beethoven, researchers found that a simple pulse tone is actually healthier for plants than complex tunes such as classical music. Number 7. Plants have feelings Plants, like animals, have feelings. They are among the most sensitive creatures you'll actually ever meet. Being immobile, they live their lives in quiet desperation, as they are subjected to the elements and predators of the wild. Like the rest of us, they can't just pick up and run either. Did you know that the scent from freshly cut grass signals cries of pain from a plant recovering from its cuts and bruises? Well, researchers at the University of Bonn in Germany found out that plants actually release gases when they are injured. These gases weren't visible to the human eye, so laser-powered microphones were used to pick up the most sensitive waves produced by the release of gas. The Swiss government went as far as to pass legislation to protect plants from unnecessary pain and suffering by extending the rights to dignity and freedom to plants. 
just like any other animal. Although many may think the legislation is a joke, rest assured that the Swiss government, much to the chagrin of some scientists, really does believe that plants feel pain when they are injured. A penalty is levied to any researcher who breaks this code. Number 6. Plants Can Talk Plants can be quite the chatterbugs. They may not vocalize sounds like most animals, but they can send out signals to fellow plants when it's necessary for their survival. Though it may not be as eloquent as a Shakespearean soliloquy, researchers have confirmed that plants do indeed talk to each other. This process isn't any different than other animals in the wilds that send sound waves when crying out for help or warning fellow species of danger. For example, when a maple tree is attacked by bugs, it releases a pheromone into the air that is picked up by neighboring maples so that they can better develop a defense strategy to repel the attack. In some cases, plants don't just send out signals to other plants of the same species, but sometimes they send out cries for help to insects too. When insects such as caterpillars start munching on their leaves, it's common for some to send out volatile chemicals to larger predatory insects like dragonflies so they can come and take care of the bugs. Plants can scream when they're in trouble or alert loved ones to protect themselves. They seem to be like any other animal surviving on planet Earth. Number 5. Plants Have Memories Be careful what you say to your plants, because they may just remember it for a long time. Researcher Monica Gagliano worked with a plant species called Mimosa pudica, a plant which looks a lot like a fern. When disturbed, a mimosa temporarily collapses its leaves on itself. Gagliano dropped the mimosa plant every 5-6 to six seconds, thereby causing it to close its leaves in reflex. Over time, she realized that the mimosa stopped collapsing its leaves altogether. It turned out that it remembered the stimulus and that it didn't cause any harm, so it stopped reacting to it. To confirm this hypothesis, Gagliano shook the plant instead. The leaves instantly collapsed. Gagliano then dropped it one more time, but again, nothing. She dropped it again a week and a month later. Still, the mimosa plant remembered that the dropping would cause it no harm, and therefore it didn't bother to close its leaves. This behavior is similar to what we would expect from an animal in the wild who learns through memory which stimuli was dangerous and which could be ignored. Number 4. Plants Have a Sense of Family Plants are family-oriented. If they could operate a camera, Facebook would be littered with photos of their family members basking in the sun and killing malicious insects on their leaves. Granted, it might not be so easy to map out its family tree, but scientists believe that plants who live in close proximity tend to be part of the same family. For example, the yellow jewelweed is a plant species with its kin close by. This plant species grows quickly to outcompete other plants for sunlight. It will even outcompete below ground by extending its root system past other plants, but the jewelweed has been observed to hold back on its ambitions when it's in the vicinity of its own kin. A jewelweed simply won't compete with its own kind. If it recognizes another jewelweed, it will deliberately reallocate its growth to avoid stealing sunlight from its family. Higher stems or deeper roots will be preferable to larger leaves that might inadvertently starve another jewelweed from much-needed sunlight. Researchers have observed this behavior in other plants too. They also believe that plants recognize kin through their complex root systems. Number 3. Plants Care About Their Communities Plants don't just take care of family. If the plants are of the same species, it's not unlikely for one plant to help out others as long as their kin are taken care of first. Take, for instance, acacia trees. These trees will help their own kinds when they're being grazed upon by wild animals looking for a meal. The tree being eaten will be the first to produce a tannin to defend itself from grazing animals as well as send an airborne scent to other acacia trees to do the same. It's a way of acacia trees taking care of one another in the wild. It's an act of altruism for other members of its species who also share the same life experience and desire to protect themselves from similar predators. Maple trees do the same. When attacked, they send out a warning to other maple trees, who, in effect, alter their chemistry to deal with the oncoming predators. Plants stick together. They know it's a hard life, so for them, helping each other is a must in the wilderness. Number 2. Plants can defend themselves in the wild Plants might seem pretty to some, but others know them to be among the most vicious creatures in the wild. It's hard to take notice of their attacks since they tend to stay rooted in the ground. But plants can fight back. For example, when mustard plants hear caterpillars chomping on their leaves, they purposefully create insecticide-like chemical compounds to ward them off. When female cabbage butterflies lay their eggs on a Brussels sprout plant with tiny portions of glue, the plant will detect the glue and swiftly change its chemistry in order to beckon female parasitic wasps to counter the butterfly's measure. For each defensive measure, plants use sight, smell, touch, and sound to know when they are under attack and how to act decisively, just like any other animal in the wild. Plants, like their fellow animals, care about being alive. Number 1. Plants do have a brain and human-like genes. 
Zombies won't be munching on plant matter any time soon. It's not a species that one would expect to have a brain, but scientists are discovering that the lack of grey matter may not necessarily mean that plants don't have some kind of way to pull off cell communication as well as cell information storage and processing. The eminent Charles Darwin, who proposed the theory of evolution, believed in a root brain hypothesis that suggested that the tip of the root, the meristem of a plant, acted like the plant's brain like it does in lower animals. Other functions regarding cells seem to be regulated by genes quite similar to those found even in human DNA. For example, Dr. Daniel Shamovitz from the Mana Center for Plant Biosciences at Tel Aviv University discovered a group of genes plants use to measure light or darkness. The same gene was found in human beings too, and in both organisms it served to regulate their circadian rhythm. Plants even produce neurotransmitters such as dopamine and serotonin, just like humans do. The reality is, plants are brainy creatures in their own right. So don't don't count them out so quickly. After all, you'll want to be able to defend yourself when they rise up and become the dominant species. So I really hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to this channel for brand new videos every day of the week. Also, I've got another channel. It's called Today I Found Out. And on that channel, we have content very much like this, except we dive into one specific subject in real depth. You can check that out through the icon on the screen now. But if you're looking for something else to watch right now, why not check out another Top 10s video or a Today I Found Out video over there on the right. And as always, thank you for watching.